With all the different tool holding options out there, it can feel difficult and confusing to know what to use for what kind of application and where different options excel. What's up guys, Ian Sandusky from Lakewood Machine and Tool back here again for Practical Machinist. And today on Machine Shop Talk, we're gonna be diving into heat shrink tooling and why we brought in this Heimer Shrink Fit Machine for Lakewood Machine and Tool. But before we do, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below to make sure you never miss a video. Let's get into it. Okay guys, so today on Machine Shop Talk, as promised, we're gonna be going through something that if you follow us on Instagram, you will see we have been using a lot. And that is shrink fit tooling. So to start off, what is shrink fit tooling? Or tool holding, I guess. These are Heimer basic shrink fit holders. These, we got them in a few different sizes. We have uh, 1 8 quarter inch, 3 8 half inch. I believe the biggest one we have is half inch, but we kind of got a range to start. And the way they work is essentially, there's no screws on these. If you've never seen one before, there's no screws, there's no collets, there's no nothing on this end. This is made of a kind of seal that behaves in a very predictable way. So when Heimer designed these, they use, I'm not sure what the seal is, I believe it may be a trade secret, but they use a seal that when it's heated, they know it's going to expand X amount. And they know when it cools, it's going to contract back exactly to where that is. So what this, the way this works is you heat up this body, it opens up slightly, you put in your tool, and when you cool it, it <laughs> grabs it. There's a few main reasons why you may wanna use it. One, the run out on these is extremely, extremely low. Um, it would be comparable or even better than a hydraulic holder because it has full grip around the entire outside of that uh, tool. There's no high spots, these are ground internally, um, you're getting a full kind of 360 collar on that. That means that if you put this on a uh, spin fixture and you run an indicator along the tool, you're gonna see almost no, if no run out, depending on you know how well you've taken care of your tools and if you abuse them. But assuming that you're doing everything the right way, that means you're gonna get less chatter, you're gonna get more accurate wall finishes, more accurate dimensions. So, I mean, think of it this way. If you have a tool and it's doing this as it's cutting, the top of that wall or feature you're doing may be here, but the bottom may be, you know, a thou, two thou, a couple tenths, whatever it is, out. Not just from the deflection, but because of the actual run out of the tool. And again, think of that tool bouncing along the side. I mean, we're exaggerating a lot by doing this, but you're gonna see that in the wall finish. So if you have a lower run out, it's gonna be a smoother finish and more accurate. The next reason why we brought these in, this is kind of, our reason for really looking at these is because there's no nuts, there's no side lock, there's no um, call it, this can get very, very small at the tool nose side. Because it can get so small down near that end, you can actually get really, really close into features and you can get very close to walls. So this can go down to, I don't know what the exact spec is, but on a 1 8, the actual body of the tool may only be 3 8. Uh, the body of the tool holder may only be three eighths. You can also get very, very long ones. So if you need to get in somewhere deep, you can get ones that either are long or have an extension or go long and thin. So it helps you get into places where you couldn't otherwise get. The other thing that we were interested about with these is that, well, we just like heating stuff up. No, I'm kidding. We wanted to check out how this would be for repeatability for our production jobs. So the nice thing about these machines, we'll go through how to run it in a second, is that they're very, very repeatable, especially if you use a tool presetter. We don't have a tool presetter, but if one guy puts a tool in a tool holder and he just tightens it down a little bit, that's gonna produce one set of results. If another guy puts a tool in a tool holder, you know, an ER call it style tool holder and cranks it down with all his weight, that's gonna produce another set of results. You know, is the call it deforming? If we're using a weld-in uh, tool holder, are we actually damaging the tool holder? Are we pushing things off center? This is all to say it takes consistency out of the process. And you guys know when you're running production, consistency is everything. With a machine like this, because you're heating at the same cycle every time, you're cooling it the same way every time, the results on the actual tool holder to the tool should be identical every single time. These holders we got, these are the 
I guess kind of the entry level. These are the basics. We got these just to try out from Heimer because we wanted to see if it was something that we could use in our shop. There's a lot of different options out there. So when you, I'm showing you these, just know this is kind of the base level as we get the, uh, our feet under us as it were. But let's shrink a tool and I'll show you how it works. Okay, so this is our Heimer Power Clamp Basic. Um, you know, this is kind of the small shop version. I like this because people always say, you know, oh, we're not big enough to have a shrink fit machine. We're, they're too expensive, et cetera. This is kind of made for job shops like ours where we don't have, you know, a giant room. We can put huge heat shrink machines. We're going to be heat shrinking one tool at a time, likely. There are bigger ones that you could do five at a time or 10 at a time. If you watch any of our uh, trade show stuff where I've covered it, you can see kind of the bigger versions. But this is the real basic version. On one side, we have our heating coil. So this is all um, induction heating. And then the other side here, we have our cooler. This is air cooled. Um, the other versions that they do manufacture are liquid cooled. This is just straight air, but it works well. So to turn it on, literally one switch, bing, bang, boom. It's gonna welcome me to the uh, software. It's gonna ask me, is everything okay? Yes, it is. Enter, and we're ready to go. So this is our shrink fit base. This just keeps everything away from our hands while we use it, which is real nice. So let's say we want to change this tool. So this is a 3 8 end mill. I'm gonna pop it in. Now, all I'm gonna do is these discs are for the different sizes of tool holder. Um, you can see they all have a range on them. So I'm gonna grab one that looks like it's the right range. Does that look good? No, nope, we're gonna go one up. The 18 to 20. Uh, actually, we wanna go even bigger. How about that one there? Perfect. So we're gonna pop that in there. Now, of course, we wanna wear gloves when we do this because things get hot very, very quickly. I mean, that's kind of the point of it. Now, the nice thing about this is between this top and the software in here, it's gonna automatically know based on what's in here and the resistance it encounters, what a good heating cycle is gonna be. So all I do is I drop this down. You can see it fits right over my tool holder. This red button is gonna turn on the coil. So we're gonna go one, two, and you can hear that, see the red light, see some nice smoke. And you can see, because we actually used that previously, that tool is gonna come out on its own. Now, if I wanna put a new tool in, all I do, drop it into the level I want it at. We're gonna set it at the level we want. And then all I'm gonna do is push it straight across here to our cooler. So our cooler, as I mentioned, this is all air operated. So this again, just drops straight down on here. This little valve here is gonna turn on my air. I'm gonna turn that off for a second just because it is loud. Uh, we're gonna cool it. It's gonna take probably about a minute, two minutes, and we're gonna take a look at it. I just don't want you guys to have to listen to this. And just like that, this is ready to roll. So now I can pop this in my machine. Again, we might wanna set up multiple of them, but at the same time, if something ever goes wrong, we break a tool, come back over, push it straight across, and we're ready to go. I'll pop up some B-roll of us actually running these. We've been reusing these in a lot of tool steels. We've been using them in our aluminum production so far. And so far, we're, uh, we're very happy with them. We're not getting some of the run out issues we were having with our side lock holders. That was kind of the, <laughs> one of the main reasons we brought it in is we were seeing a lot of deflection when we were using longer tooling. These are a bit more vibration dampening than something like an ER, ER call it. So, you know, so far experience with them has been fantastic. We're gonna keep running these at the shop here. We're gonna try to bring in some of the higher level tooling. They have a hybrid chuck that looks very, very interesting. I wanna take a peek at as well. But if you are looking for a small shop, job shop heat shrink machine, this one so far has been fantastic and I highly recommend you check them out. If you are interested in this, you can always give me a shout. You can always send me an email. You can always come by and take a look. And as always, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifi notifications below to make sure you never miss a video. Take care.